Hi there. I don't know how this is going to work out because I'm not completely empty headed this time. And uh, empty headed has been very successful for quite a while. Um, I have a topic that I want to speak on. And it's Little Grandmother, but it's not just that. It's not just Keisha Crowther. It's the, uh, the feeling that I get, that I know a lot of us have. We feel a nervousness and a tension among the people across the country. Um, and it's little wonder, I mean, especially for the many people that are plugged into the mainstream media the so-called regular media, because they uh, are designed to keep people in tension and fear, discontent, unrest, and uh, consuming, purchasing, buying. That's what they want. That's what it's all designed for. Uh, and the news that's not news, at least in the U.S. of A., um, it's, uh, it's a bought and paid for lap dog in the media. It's nothing like it was designed to be. And so many of us have given that up. And, uh, you know, we go to other avenues. Even BBC is better. Uh, unfortunately, to get the news of what's happening in the country, you have to go get it in another country. And we're in a very interesting place here in America right now. Um, it's a transitional time on the earth in the country and there are a lot of things that are in flux and that will continue to be and so people are nervous um, plugged into the solar plexus to the unrest I feel it right now because I'm addressing this issue um, Keisha Crowther may not be what she says she is. It's looking pretty strongly like she isn't. I don't completely know, but I'm going to go ahead and speak out anyway and say truth will stand on its own. It doesn't need anyone to defend it. It cannot be defeated. And so uh, what Keisha has spoken, little grandmother, or what anyone has spoken, that is true. It just is what it is, and it will stand, and it, and it will come to pass. Um, but Keisha's credentials are looking very shaky at this point. Um, I've had word that uh, through an assistant to Wandering Wolf, um, Don Alejandro, the uh, highly respected authority and grandfather in the Maya community in South America, that he doesn't know who she is, doesn't know what she's about. And uh, for some, that would be enough to act on and to come out and say, okay, I, I pull my support from her. Um, Keisha's biggest claim to authority and authenticity was the uh, Continental Congress of Indigenous Elders, I think it's called. And I've been waiting to hear if they would speak out one way or another about her. But there are just enough things that have come together and come to light that I'm going to have to say um, I'm no longer following her. Uh, uh, I'm not seeking out her videos or uh, placing too much weight in what she has to say. Like I say, the truth is the truth. And wherever it's spoken, it has its own authority. And it doesn't need people to back it up. So uh, to be aligned with truth is something that anyone can do, and that includes you and me, no matter who you are. 
And so Keisha's message is very beautiful about having no prejudice of any kind um, and about changes upcoming and uh, a new and more beautiful world ahead. Um, so much of what she says does resonate with me. But it's not just Keisha I want to talk about. It's this um, fear. There is uh, fear underlying just beneath the surface in so many people. Uh, myself possibly included. I mean, no one's perfect here. Or chances are very good we wouldn't be here. Okay? Uh, when I look at my uh, YouTube uh the analysis that they offer people who post videos on the web, it's called Insight. Day after day after day, whenever I look at it, it seems, um, the thing that gets most watched on my website is the video I did where Keisha foretold two days of darkness coming on the earth. But even among all the videos I have out there, I can tell by the ones that are most watched that people are looking for trouble. They're looking for evidence. They're looking for something. They're looking for an anchor in a storm. And so that's really what I want to talk about. I don't believe that we should put our faith and trust in anyone or in anything that anyone has to say, and that includes me. Um, the way I, I read it and see it, it is a time for all of us to pull self back within, to go within the heart, as I'm always saying, and find yourself there. What you find there is a connection with divinity. I'll just say it that way. Um, a whole books could be written on it. But I'll just say you find a connection with divinity there that is safe and secure. Okay? Um, maybe the only thing that gets in the way of making that good solid connection is however much we're still anchored in mind. My friends, it's mind that has fear. It's mind that quakes in its boots. Um, mind is very much attached to the 3D manifestation and that's just the smallest part of who and what we are. Okay, you are not your mind. You are not your body. Your body is contained within who and what you are. Who and what we are is so great and so magnificent that we will look back on these days and laugh. It's bizarre. Uh, the tail is wagging the dog for each of us pretty much and until we anchor within. And so um, I want to say on, on the one hand it doesn't matter what comes on the earth. You are safe and secure. You cannot be hurt. You cannot be damaged. You cannot be messed with or interfered with in any way except as you choose to give your power away to the things of the earth. All right? And you've really got to get out of the head and out of the mind in order to hear this. Yes, of course, a body can be harmed. Then again, I will remind you, um, I've, I've said in my videos before, I know of people who saw they were driving at high speed on the freeway uh, and saw an accident approaching, you know, that thing where, where you've got two or three seconds, you see it coming, things are out of control already and they made a strong and powerful call for assistance of prayer. And their car passed through the other car. Through it, no one was hurt. No cars were damaged. 
In another instance, it was as if they were playing bumper car, almost as if there was a force field of air or light or something around the vehicle, and they kind of bounced off one another. Again, no damage, no injury. So this is a hologram, OK? To the extent that you know that, the rules change for you. And I can speak with some authority on this. That's what's flowing through right now. To the extent that you pull out of the mind, enter into the heart, which also translates as enter into your higher self. Things are not what they seem to be. Your belief in them is what props them up. It's just like that which I feared has come upon me. I mean, it's been said many ways that when you fear a thing, what you're doing is you're chaining it to you. You're bringing it on. And so fears need to be faced. They don't need to be stuffed. They don't need to be run from. They don't need to, you don't need to try to reason them away. That's a band-aid on a gaping wound, all right? And so maybe a good thing if you can uh, carve out some time and space for yourself is to sit down and pretend, okay, what's the worst case scenario here? Bring it on, let's look at it, let's get into it, let's face it, and let's see what that looks like and feels like. Um, this is individual. Everyone has to deal with this for themselves. Uh, there are all kinds of things that are in flux. I won't, you know, go into a great big long list, but there's the currency. There's the pole shift. There's the government. Uh, there's the New Madrid fault or whatever, you know, earthquakes. There's PARP. There's weather. There's what? ever okay all of it all of it roll it up in a little ball and get a big strong box lift the box and open it now let's put that ball of stuff in there and close this heavy lid on it and let it sit there for a while while we talk here let that be for now and go into your heart please and be strong and firm in there and feel what it feels like when the fears are all locked up and under control. If you don't do that, if you don't find a way to do that, you're not going to find yourself. What fear does is it's an instant short circuit in your energy force field and it cuts you off from the higher frequencies and vibrations from your own higher self, from your integrity, from anything. Fear messes with our energy, and it uh, leaves us e easily manipulable, okay? We can be messed with. Uh, our energies can be read by beings that can do this, and when they see what we fear, we're so easy to manipulate, my friends. So let's get on top of this, okay? Let's pull out of all of that nonsense. Um, I highly recommend for you who feel called to do it to go do a search and don't Google it. All right, go to startpage.com. Let's start doing some secure searching instead of something where they're keeping track of us way too much and storing the information on us, which is what Google does. Startpage.com will give you secure searching with some measure of privacy. All right, so go, uh, Google, go search on NDE, which stands for Near Death Experience. Many people fear death. I am strongly of the opinion that uh, it is much more appropriate to mourn at a birth and celebrate at a death or a crossing over than the reverse. 
The other way, the way that we're used to doing it, is the 3D way. That's when we live on the surface of life. We are not surface beings. We have given our power away. I call on you, take your power back. You are a powerful being. All right? You know, let's not have people tugging our chains, pulling our tail, and, and making us chase ourselves around this way. Um, all of the things that need to be dealt with are right within you, right where you are. They're not outside of you. They're not outside of me. What, to be empowered is a matter of going within and dealing with what we find there. And then, no matter what happens, no matter where it happens, no matter how it happens, you've secured yourself from within. And that's what counts. And you'll see the power of that manifesting as you watch yourself handling things. Now, for myself, personally, um, you know, I'm being a good Boy Scout here, a good Girl Scout. It just pays to be prepared so that no matter what it is, a massive power outage from a storm, no matter what it is, it's a good idea to have 30 days of supplies on hand, food and water. That is not hard to do. It's such a funny thing. Here in Arkansas, we're in what they call Tornado Alley. We're, we're on the edge of that. We do get tornadoes in the season. And whenever one is predicted, if you go to town, if you find yourself at the store, there's people in line everywhere. You can see what they're doing. They're getting their groceries, you know, so that they can hibernate if they need to. And my suggestion is get some, some stuff that will keep, you know, have some dry cereal, have crackers, have different things, have peanut butter, have nuts, have whatever, you know, dehydrated fruits and things, raisins, uh, just have things, all right? Have popcorn, have, have just stuff so that push comes to shove, you're fine. You've got no necessity to go deal with weather or with, with anything, all right? Now, here's an idea for you. I've done it myself. I know that it works. All of us have wheelie bins. We have these 30-gallon trash cans or, or, you know, the larger size trash bin. And there are the bags, the liners for those. You can get one of those and fill it with water, my friends. And then take just a, a capful, a little capful of Clorox and pour in there, or however much you think is appropriate. This stuff evaporates off. But meanwhile, you can seal that container up, and it will be good for you for several years. You don't have to worry about mold and different things growing in there, and you will have an emergency supply of water that's your very own so that whatever happens, you're prepared, okay? Everybody should always have a light source, flashlights, batteries, you know? Have these things. It's not a big deal. We're so scattered that sometimes we don't have the basic things taken care of. And you're going to find a great deal of comfort will come to you when you have just some really basic things locked down like that. And then you can take a deep breath and you can know that you're fine. When I lived in New York, Montana, different places like that, I always had a down coat and a blanket tucked away in the trunk so that if I had car problems, you know, I would be more comfortable. These are basic common sense things, my friends. And so that's my call, is let's, let's pull out the common sense. And I say we have to look at the fear. Um, and it's a personal thing. But it's a really good idea to face it, to sit with it to invite it to tea, tea and biscuits.
you know, coffee and cookies, whatever it is, sit there and I'm going to say get into the feeling of it and listen to it. What's it trying to say to you? If you're in heart, you have nothing to fear from it, okay? There's something, there's a part of yourself there that's trying to communicate with you. Chances are good, it's, it's trying to alert you to something that you're not prepared for. Maybe it's just trying to bring before your awareness, um, let's say there's a relationship that you're afraid to lose. Well, sit with it. Sit down and pretend that that relationship was over yesterday. And what's your life like now? And look at that. Come to terms with it. It might come in layers. It might be that you can't take whatever it is all at once. That's perfectly okay. Your heart will guide you into the best way to handle this. But you're not doing yourself any favors by listening to the media or by watching horror flicks or by doing, you name it, okay, you fill in the blanks. You know the things that you do. Maybe you're going into forums where the people are, are, are fearful and frightened and angry and that kind of thing, and that stirs it up in you. Whatever it is, see if you can't take a break of a week from it. Whatever it is, see if you can't put it on hold, table that motion for a week. Let it go. Don't go to it. Don't think about it. Don't do whatever it is that's encouraging this fear in you until you can come to terms with it in yourself. Get a look at yourself. Try to pull your energy out of whatever it is that, that's got you uh, feeling like that. You need to find yourself in the midst of this. Yourself is your anchor. Your higher self, your inner self, your own, you are divinity walking the earth. But how can you connect up with that if you allow yourself to be in fear? What have you given your power away to? I don't recall right now if I've ever told this story, but I'm going to finish up this video with this story. Years and years ago, um, all my life I had nightmares all my life and it was guaranteed uh, if I ever laid on my back I would have nightmares I would always go to sleep on my tummy but if in the night I would roll over um, I would wake up with a terrible nightmare and find myself on my back and I just you know it was just life and I just dealt with it and then one night in these nightmares I was very, very often a prisoner, or I was bound, tied up, chained, shackled, whatever it was. And uh, one night, and, and it was often in the top floor of whatever it was, whatever building. One night I found myself in a, in a very big, very, uh, very old home, uh, white home, and I was on the top floor, and as usual, I was bound. And there, there were many people there and I decided I was fed up enough of this I'd had it all of a sudden I found myself in a great big empty room on the very top floor um, I can see the wood flooring to this day it was a beautiful wood floor the, it, the room was empty of furniture um, and I was calling uh, to Archangel Michael, who uh, had been the one I called to to be cut free of, of being bound. And there was, a, there was a man there, and he walked up to me, and, and, and he was asking me what I was doing, and I told him. And, he's, and he, he challenged me. He said, that's nothing, you know. Uh, Lucifer is, is far more powerful than Archangel Michael ever dreamed of being. And so I said, fine. Uh, and this was what some would call a lucid dream. I don't know that it was that. It was so real. 
I told him, okay, you go over there. And I pointed across the big empty room and I said, you go call up Lucifer. And I'll stay here and I'm going to call up Archangel Michael. And then we'll see. And so he walked away and he stood uh, the length of the room away from me. And so I was calling to Archangel Michael and um, I was a little concerned because I wasn't seeing him um, nor sensing, you know, around me uh, his presence. And here comes this guy walking back across the room to me. And he just looked like himself, but I knew beyond the shadow of any doubt, I knew that was Lucifer walking back over. And where was Archangel Michael? And that was when I had my light bulb moment. And it came on me in a flash, just like they say in the cartoons. I mean, in a flash, I knew what the deal was. And I just lit up with it. And I thought, oh, I get it. And I said, you have no power. You have no power, no more than I am willing to give you. And I pointed to him and I said, and I give you zero, zip, zero, nada, nothing. And poof, he was gone. I was awake and I haven't had nightmares since then. So I want to share that because we can all take our power back. I'm not sharing that to make myself anything special. Not at all. None of us is any better than anyone else. Come on, we're all one. We're, uh, I, you know, we're all the same being. We really are. We're different facets of the same gem. However, we are individual and we do have individual cares and concerns. And so my hope and my prayer and my request to everyone is to take your power back. Please look into your life, look into your surroundings, your situation, the people around you, the media that you're listening to, what you're reading, um, the, the people at work, who do you associate with, whatever it is, look at it. Your television viewing habits, what kind of things do you view? All right, look at it all from the perspective of heart and see where you've given your power away. And let's take it back. This community of light is tremendously powerful. And as each one of us cleans up our act this way, all of us are empowered tremendously. We are one. And whatever we are, that's what we bring to the mix. I love you, my friends. Good day. Good night, whatever it is where you are. I know a lot of us have. We feel a nervousness and a tension among the people across the country. Um, and it's little wonder, I mean, especially for the many people that are plugged into the mainstream media, the so-called regular media, because they uh, are designed to keep people in tension and fear, discontent, unrest, and uh, consuming, purchasing, buying. That's what they want. That's what it's all designed for. Uh, and the news that's not news, at least in out anyway, and say, truth will stand on its own. It doesn't need anyone to defend it. It cannot be defeated. And so um, what Keisha has spoken, little grandmother, or what anyone has spoken that is true, it just is what it is, and it will stand, and it, and it will come to pass. Um, but Keisha's credentials are looking very shaky at this point. Um, I've had word that uh, through an assistant to wander the U.S. of A. Um, it's, uh, it's a bought and paid for lapdog in the media. 
It's nothing like it was designed to be. And so many of us have given that up. And, uh, you know, we go to other avenues. Even BBC is better. Uh, unfortunately, to get the news of what's happening in the country, you have to go get it in another country. And we're in a very interesting place here in America right now. Um, it's a transitional time on the earth in the country. And there are a lot of things that are in flux and that will continue to be. And so people are nervous. Um, plugged into the solar plexus, to the unrest. I feel it right now because I'm addressing this issue. Um, Keisha Crowther may not be what she says she is. It's looking pretty strongly like she isn't. I don't completely know, but I'm going to go ahead and speak out Hi there. I don't know how this is going to work out because I'm not completely empty headed this time. And uh, empty headed has been very successful for quite a while. Um, I have a topic that I want to speak on and it's little grandmother, but it's not just that. It's not just Keisha Crowther. It's the uh, feeling that I get that 